Happy New Year, everybody. With the arrival of the new year comes a new chapter in your life. And it's comforting to know that God remains a central, a central figure in that story, ever present as the pages turn. We look back on 2023 as a year that was difficult, problematic, rewarding, beneficial, but overall good, bad, and indifferent. It was a year that has been a blessing. Um, except for Vicki, she's still married to Charlie. Um, did I say that out loud? No. Oh. So we're going to go right into scripture. <sighs> Philippians, they made me eat potato chips. So now my mouth is dry. I tried to gargle with Coke. And uh, it didn't happen. Do you guys know, listen, before we get into this, how many people here by raise of hands will pick a restaurant based on if it's Coke or Pepsi? They're pointing at me. So I am not the oddball. I won't go to a restaurant and eat regardless of how good the food is if they serve Pepsi. It's got to be Coca-Cola because I don't want my food ruined. Just so you know. Philippians 4.8, from now on, brothers and sisters, if anything is excellent and if anything is admirable, focus your thoughts on these things, and that is true, all that is holy, all that is just, all that is pure, all that is lovely, and all that is worthy of praise. The good news about that scripture is this, this year you should focus on positive and virtuous, virtuous thoughts. It's okay to dive deeper into things that are true, honorable, pure, and worthy of praise. These inner thoughts reflect the nature of God and your faith, and it will bring you peace. In this coming year, which is stroke of midnight today, think more about God. Um, I had somebody tell me, what do I think God looks like? Anybody else try to imagine what God would look like if you were having a conversation with him? You get that picture in your head, and then you have a conversation. And it's the same thing when you have a conversation with the cross and Jesus up there. You think about what conversation would you have. And the first thing that I would say to God, if he was in this church, well, he is in this church this morning. The first thing that I would say face-to-face -face with him is, how can I be a better John? The second thing would be, how can I benefit more people by being a better John? And I think in 2023, through all the hiccups and mishaps and everything that happened, the good news is that's erased because this is a new day. Tomorrow is a new year. It's a new chapter on how our lives can be. <sighs> Ephesians 4, 31, 32. Put aside all bitterness, losing your temper, angry, shouting, slander, along with every other evil. Be kind, compassionate, and forgiving to each other in the same way that God forgave you in Christ. The good news about that is this year you can get rid of your bitterness, get rid of your rage, get rid of your anger, get rid of your gossip and slander. Instead, opt for being compassionate of other people and yourselves. Everyone, forgive everyone, plus yourself. As God forgave mankind, imitating God and letting go of the negative emotions and behavior will bring harmony to your life. It'll bring new friendships. It'll bring new opportunities. But more importantly, it'll give you a better peace and a better joy about not, not just who you were, because we know who you were. We want to know who you're going to be with Christ and faith. And I don't mean some faith. I mean true faith. Faith knowing that you don't need anybody but God, but God will put people in your path to support you on your journey to find true faith. Now, a lot of people think they have faith. Faith is harder to obtain than what you think it is because it requires work. When something goes wrong, instead of saying something, think of faith. What would you do if you really had your faith where you wanted it? What would you do in your life differently 
in 2024 than you did in 2023 if your faith was stronger. So I challenge you to be better version of yourself in 24 than you were in 23. All right, as soon as they get in here, everybody stand up and clap. Hebrews 13.5. You ready? One. Get up. Let's go. Welcome. See, it's better live. Hebrews 13.5. Your way of life should be free from the love of money, and you should be content with what you have. After all, he said, I will never leave you or abandon you. The good news, don't put emphasis on money or relationships or material things. Keeping your life free from these things shall shallow will give you peace. Get away from the things that are shallow, that are meaningless if you die. You can't take your money with you. Remember the old saying is, I've never seen a hearse drive by to the cemetery with an ATM machine behind it. You can't take it. It's, it's not doing you any good anymore. The same thing with everything that you've tried to accumulate. I knew a guy one time that collected train sets, though, you know, those really expensive train sets. And I asked him, I said, how much money do you have in those trains? He said, well, this one's from 1950. Ball. I paid $50,000 for that. He had his train, just his train sets, Lionel's, Lionel trains. He had those insured for $1.5 million dollars. And I said, what happens to, to those when you die? He goes, I don't know. I'm like, then why are you spending all your money on the trains right now? And he goes, I wanted them. I'm like, you have $1.5 million worth of trains just because you wanted them. He said, yeah. And I go, how many homeless people could you feed for $1.5 million? He goes, never thought of it. I'm like, so what are you going to do with them when you die? He goes, I don't know. He doesn't have great faith now, does he? He had things that he didn't know why he had them, and he didn't know what he was going to do with them while he was living, and he didn't know what was going to happen to him when he died. Don't let your life be what's going to happen to you when you die. You better know your destination on what's going to happen. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in every situation because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The good news about that scripture, Christian joy is not dependent on eternal situations, external situations and factors. Your faith brings strength. And if you connect with God through prayer, you will reap the benefit of his guidance. A lot of people pray and they go, God never answered me. God, I, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed, but God won't answer me. <sighs> Hang on, I got to. It's not that God's not answering you. It's that God's not answering you right now. Or God did answer you, and it wasn't the answer that you wanted. You wanted something else, so you're begging God again for something else. And when you don't get it, you curse God. How dare you do this to me? And why isn't this working out? And why is it always me? And why is this happening? Blah, 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 blah. Listen for what God's calling you to do and what God's saying for you to do. Just because it's not the answer that you want doesn't mean that God isn't answering you. He answers in so many different ways and so many different times. Not on our time. The book of James says that. It's not our time. It's his time. His time is indefinite. Amen? 2 Corinthians 4, 17, 18. Our temporary minor problems are producing an eternal stockpile of glory for us that is beyond all comparison. We don't focus on the things that can be seen, but on the things that can't be seen. The one things that can be seen don't last, but the things that can't be seen are eternal. The good news, bad times and bad people pass away. And what awaits us is the future will always be glorious than what we can imagine. But we have to earn that. We can't expect to die today 
living the way that we lived a lot of the, the life that we lived in 2023 and expect to get to the gate and God roll that film and our life is being put on that video screen and we're watching it and we get to the end and God goes, a lot of us are just going to go ahead and jump instead of being kicked there. And a lot of them are going to argue with God. Newsflash, it's too late. You can't argue with God. You're done dead. You done got got. Make 24 the year that you actually change. And if people around you don't like it, pick a different crowd. Because the crowd that's with you isn't going to be the crowd that is with you. Amen? Pick what's best for you on your journey. If you have to cut ties to keep your faith, cut ties. Whether it's family, friends, whatever it is, cut those ties. Because this is eternal damnation or eternal bliss. And here's the funny thing, and it's not so funny, but it's real. It's your choice. Like, I can't choose it for you. You have to choose to want this. You have to choose to want this for your children. You have to choose to want better for yourself. Nobody can do that for you but you. You have to be the one to change. You have to be the one to repent. You have to be the one that looked back at 2023 and says, yeah, I went too far. Yeah, should have not done that. And everybody's got that. Don't make the same mistakes in 24 that we did in 23. Let's lead 2024 with faith and take that giant leap with God guiding. 1 Peter 1, three. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be blessed on account of his vast mercy has given us new birth. You have been born anew and in a living hope through the resurrection of Christ Jesus from the dead. The good news is, is that thanks to Christ's sacrifice, we have the power to always start fresh without the burdens of our past to weigh us down. That scripture tells us that we have the power to start fresh. Now, how do you start fresh? Praise God. Repent your sin, be baptized, and turn, turn away from your sin. See, our sin was stamped, paid in full at Calvary. We don't need to pay it anymore. We just have to live by the law that God has presented to us. We just have to be good people. God is telling us, I know who you are. That's why I sent him. Now be who I want you to be now because he paid it. Why can't you live under grace if grace has been given? Amen? 2024 should be your final year of grace. Eat it, consume it, live it. You'll be so much better. Psalm 6511. You crown the year with your goodness, your paths overflow with rich food. God always wants our future to be bright. And his intention is to surround us with the abundance and blessing for that. Have faith in that intention as you go forth into the new year. God says, I know your path. It's a path of goodness and righteousness. He has given us that gold path to take. He has given us a blueprint on how to make this next year way better than the year before. The problem is we have to slap ourselves on the head with our knuckles sometimes and wake ourselves up inside and go, okay, wait a minute. I need to reevaluate me and my mental and my mindset. I got to reevaluate what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and for who I'm doing it for. When you reevaluate, you'll find out that you should be one. If you don't do it for yourself, you're dishonoring yourself. Because if you can't make you better, nobody else is going to. Work on you first, and then lead other people in the passion and the compassion that God has for everybody. Make 2024 the year of change. And I dare, every matter of fact, I'll go old school on you. I double dare you. I triple dog dare you. And it doesn't get any bigger, bigger dogs than that. Today, I triple dog dare you today to do something nice to somebody. Just to see how it feels. Just do something unexpectedly nice. And watch the smile on that other person's face 
that you do it for. Just do it and see what happens. You'll feel a lot better about yourself and you'll make God smile. Lamentations 3.22.23 Certainly the faithful love of the Lord hasn't ended. Certainly God's compassion isn't through. They are renewed every morning. Great is His faithfulness. The good news about that scripture is that God's love towards us is as certain as the arrival of the new day and the new year. It's going to happen. And because He is unwavering, even in the face of our own personal changes, we can always rely on His holy mercy. So don't be afraid to try something and make mistakes. Even if you make a mistake and fall, God has your hand. He will pick you back up, bring you back from the ashes, and say, now come and do it my way. Because your way didn't work. My way is proven. So why don't you go on the proven path? Why don't you go on the path of righteousness? Why don't you go on the path that we can make this thing big again? Why don't you go on the path of, of just being a good Christian? I did a TikTok video yesterday. I know. It's 65,000, 66,000 views or something already. And all I said was, in the new year, let's try to lead more and more people to the cross. It's, make sure it's not about race, it's about grace. Let's try to make America as great as America can be. And even if you're not a Christian, why can't we all just be good people, all get along, and try to make this world a better place? I had to block about 100 people. Out of that, they got, why am I into politics? I never mentioned the election or who to vote for. Why am I cramming the cross down everybody's face, which I didn't? All you religious people are all the same. You're always wanting something. I never asked for anything other than to try to be a good person. So if that's asking too much for somebody to be a good person, go to hell. Um, what? Well, <laughs> Sometimes my mind makes words come out. I don't think, and this is where we're at right now. Here's my point. I did a post to make sure, and I purposely did it, to make sure I alienated nobody. And over 100 people came back barking at me. I could say that vanilla ice cream is the most plain flavor ever, which it is. It's vanilla. And I will, somebody will post a hundred times about how prejudiced I am because it's vanilla. You know, that pastor's prejudice, it's, why didn't he say chocolate? And then if I said chocolate, I'm reverse racist because I didn't say vanilla. Then if I didn't mention the cross, I can't be a pastor because I didn't mention the cross. And if I mention Trump, oh Lord, don't do that. If I mention Biden, they're like, well, who do you think you are? Uh, you're back in communist country. If I mention God, you're cramming it down somebody's face. If I mention Jesus and the cross, it's a mythical person that man made up so that they have some way to feel good about themselves before they die. You can't win. Or can you? Well, we're going to win. We're going to win. It doesn't matter how many people want to bark. It doesn't matter how many people you want to bite. It, magi it, it, it matters on how you bark back. And it matters on how bad your bite is. And I've told this people a million times. <laughs> Just because you don't see it happening, don't think it's not. God is with us and protecting us everywhere we go. But I mentioned in that thing too, conspiracy theories. I said, let's get away from all these conspiracy theories. And the people said, they came back and said, well, America's not even America anymore. It's just one big conspiracy theory. And the election's a conspiracy theory. And this global warming's a conspiracy. That's all I said. And I got 500 comments of people coming up with things that I'm going, I was talking to you. What, what are you thinking? And I just scratch my head. And I think, how did we get to this point? And then I realized how we got to this point. Narcissism, egomaniacs, people that want attention. You've got all these celebrities out there influencing people. You've got this one celebrity now that, 
They just had a three-year-old uh, boy, and they're already talking about when he's old enough to talk to get him into re reformation thing because he's really a girl. He's three. He doesn't even know. He can't even stand up and pee yet. You know, he's still walking around in that little <laughs> diaper that if you go, it turns blue. So, so you know. How can you, how can you tell what it is? Give him a G.I. Joe. Give him that little wind-up Evil Knievel doll. Give him, some, give him a farm with dirt on it. And see what they want to be when they're 10. But give them a chance. Deuteronomy 31.8. But the Lord is the one who is marching before you. He is the one who will be with you. He won't let you down. He won't abandon you. So don't be afraid or scared. <clears throat> don't be afraid or scared. The good news is you don't have to feel, fear the uncertainty of the future and what lies ahead. Have faith that God is always with you and will steer you in the right direction. He will steer you in the right direction. And I told some I, last Sunday, I said, God's with you everywhere. And somebody said, is he with you in your car? I said, yes. Is he with you in your bathroom? I said, yes. Is he with you in the shower? I said, yes. He's with you in your car. He's with you in the shower. He's with you in the house. He's here in this church. He's on a ski slope. He's on a race car track. He's wherever you are, there's God. You can't run or hide. And God's got this transcriptionist up there in heaven. And there's one for everybody. See, not really, I'm just making this up. And they're up there, they're going, oh, what'd you say, Joni? I'm going to use that the day you die. And then when you die, they're going to go, you remember what you said here? Do you remember what you did here? You remember? And you're held accountable. Make 2024 the year that if you died that second, there is nothing up there written that you're going to have to look at God at, when he says, why did you do that? There's nothing on the paper for him to say that about. Because it's all good, positive news on your part. There's no conspiracy theories. There's no more of this junk that Jesus didn't exist. Here's the thing. I don't have to, be, to, to prove that Jesus exists for me. I know it. If you're in this church... You have to at least think he exists, and if you don't believe completely, at least you're wondering enough to come into the church, right? It's our job to get you over there. So I'm going to do this for a minute. Nobody believed that King David existed. All these atheists and all these scientists, woohoo, brainiac people, were not thinking that Jesus existed, or King David. So then a few years ago, they found a tablet that said the House of David. So then they're like, oh yeah, but they, haven't, they don't know about his son Solomon. That's never been proved. He built a temple. And then they found it. Well, Sodom and Gomorrah didn't happen. Oh yeah, they found that too. Moses didn't part the Red Sea. There is no proof. Well, yeah, they found the, the wheels at the Gulf of Aqaba. It, it actually did. Well, there's no proof that, that uh, Pontius Pilate was really the ruler of when they did that, yeah, they found his ring, and it's engraved his name. Um, and it just goes on. Well, Hezekiah really wasn't, yeah, I know they found the bowl that was inscribed in his. Is, you get my point? They keep, every time that it says it can't be, archaeologist says, well, we, we just found it. So it is. It's the most important part of history that's been found in the last 40 years. Has been uncovered under earth to prove that the Holy Bible and those stories aren't just stories. They're fact. They're non-fictional fact. These people existed. It's written in our book about what happened. The people were real. God put them through what they, what they got put through for a reason, and they came out shining and gave God glory. This book, this life, this faith, that cross, that God, that Man is real. And there's nothing that you can say or do about it. You can deny it all you want because you want to live the lifestyle that you want to live. All you want. But one day you're going to get got. And you better hope you're got while you're alive and you have a chance to change. 
Because if you don't, and it's too late, don't say you weren't warned, Lucy. You're warned. Amen? These smartest guys ever to exist claim didn't happen. Big Bang Theory. You know how the Big Bang Theory started? God went, bang! Now it started. I don't believe that out of nowhere came something. I don't believe that we as an earth is sitting on an axle and spinning exactly the way it has to, producing exactly enough gravity and exactly enough air, exactly enough vegetation, exactly enough humans, the reproduction system of a human being. I don't believe that happened from a Big Bang Theory. I think that happened from a big God. And you can't tell me any different. And if you tell you any different, I think there's medicine for that. <laughs> Isaiah 43, 18, 19. Don't remember the prior things. Don't ponder ancient history. Look, I am doing a new thing. Now it sprouts up. Don't you recognize it? I'm making a way in the desert, paths in the wilderness. New. It's easy to get stuck in the past and get held back emotionally by what happened yesterday. But the only truly well, to only truly welcome a fresh start is to look forward, not back. Take a dip, deep breath, envision on what you want the future to be for you, and take that first step forward. Now, do you need to go back and go, oh man, I shouldn't have done that? No. You should never look back and ever say, I shouldn't have. You should have learned your lesson then and walked forward in faith and get closer to God to help as many people as you can. Because you're going to die. I don't, why do you say that all the time, Pastor? Because it's a fact. You're going to die. So am I. I just don't want it to be today. But if it was, I'm okay. I'll be all right. Ephesians 4, 24. Change the former way of your life that was part of the person you once were, corrupted by deceitful desires. Instead, renew the thinking in your mind by the spiritual and clothe yourself with the new creature according to God's image in justice and true holiness. None of us in here, no one in this room tonight is free from sin. You're not. But that doesn't mean we can't begin anew. Molding ourselves into the person that we actually want to be for us. What you want to be for you. Because as many times as you try to please other people, you're going to fail. Because in their mind, you're never good enough. You're never good enough. You never say the right things. You don't look like this. You don't act like this. You're never good enough to other people. And here's a newsflash. It should never matter. It should never matter that you're not good enough for somebody else other than you. You should look in the mirror and go, yep, I'm good enough. And then move forward. I know you're going to find this hard to believe. Look in the mirror and look at yourself and go, yeah, I like what I see. I like what I'm doing. Get a little attitude about yourself. Get a little cockiness about yourself. Get a little swagger about yourself. And then go spread the word of God to people. And they're going to go, what in the world was they drinking? I'm drinking that holy water. I'm drinking that water from that holy well. I'm drinking what the Holy Spirit gave me. I'm doing everything that I can to walk in righteousness with God. But I'm going to do it my way. I'm not going to do it my neighbor's way, my son or my daughter's way. I'm not going to do it my wife or my husband's way. I'm going to do it my way. And if they don't like it, they're just going to have to learn to live with it until they agree with me and do it my way. Amen? Because your way at that point will be the right way. Jeremiah 29, 11. I love this scripture. <clears throat> love it. I know the plans I have in mind for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace, not disaster, to give you a future filled with hope. When life begins to weigh you down, it can be hard to see the forest through the trees. But take comfort in knowing that God always has a plan and a time when you'll begin to serve him. God always has a plan and a purpose. God always has a time in mind 
when new will begin. God always knows when the blessings will flow. God always knows when you're going to wake up and you're finally going to see that proverbial light and you're going to go, oh yeah, I got it. I get it now. And when you get it, you'll know it. You'll be filled with the happiness that you've never experienced before. You'll be filled, you'll be sitting in your house drinking your coffee. And you'll just want to get up and go, who can I help today? Or you'll want to get up and just read scripture because you want to know more about it. Or you'll get up and watch a TV program about God. Or you'll start thinking about what you can do to help somebody else. Somebody in this church this morning, early, came into my office and said, can I be on the Christmas committee? I'm like, a little late, isn't it? Like, no, for next year. I like that. Already planning for 24. Already planning for 2024. That's knowing that God is going to first bless them with another, you know, almost 12 months of life, but wanting to get involved to make sure it's even bigger this year, this coming year, than it was last year. That's cool. That's pleasing to God. Job 8 7, although your former state was ordinary, your future will be extraordinary. Keeping Christ close to your heart isn't always easy. But as we continue this journey through life, carrying his lessons will help us open infinite new possibilities. And i got to cut this short because of the time I have. But in 2023, I want everybody to briefly look back and how could you have done something differently? How could you have acted differently? How could you have talked differently? Um... How could you build more, more confidence in yourself? Because the key to just about everything in life is confidence. Because if you don't believe in you, you're already destined to fail. You have to be the one that starts the belief. God believed in you enough. He killed a man for you. He gave his only son to die on a cross. Amen? He tortured his son. That's true love to me. Amen? So regardless of what you did, regardless of what people think of you, regardless of what you think of yourself, it's all going to start with that look in the mirror. When you look in the mirror and go, this isn't who I want to be. And then you look in the mirror again after prayer and trying to, try, trying to be the best that you can be. You look in the mirror again, and then you can finally say, I see God. I see now who I'm supposed to be, man, woman, or child. I know what I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to do. We get a chance once a year to clean the slate by, by calendar date. We get to clean the slate. We get to forget everything that happened that previous year in 23. And we get to start at midnight and write a new story of our life on a blank sheet of paper. Make this blank sheet of paper the most important paper. You all shave your head. Make this blank piece of paper the most important writing that you've ever done in, my, in your life. Make it so that five years from now when you look back on it, you still look back on it as the most important thing you've ever done in your life because you finally submitted your will completely to God. You finally decided that that cross was enough. But also... You finally got the point. You are enough. And don't let anybody, job, relationship with someone, family, don't ever let them tell you that you're not enough. That is the biggest deal breaker of faith that you can get. It's one of Satan's greatest tools is to drag you down and break you down so that you can't see what the true light of God has on you when it shines. Let God's light shine on you this year. Amen. We got big things coming. We got the Opry. We got the Troubadour. February, we've got uh, Nashville Palace and the Commodore. March, we've got uh, Wild Horse Saloon and the Troubadour. April, we're back at the Opry twice. Uh, we've got big things coming up here. We've got big things coming up here. Um, I'll be gone next Sunday. Pastor Bill will be doing this. You guys are in for a great treat. 
Um, but when I come back the following Sunday, we go live on country television and on, that's not the truth, country television and country Christian television. It's not live, it's a two hour delay because they have to edit it and put commercials in it. But we're taking it to be on there. So we have those two, we still have iTube 247. God has really blessed this church worldwide, blessed it worldwide. And uh, I'm very thankful for everybody that's here, for the people that uh, are watching at home. Happy New Year from the Cowboy Church. And if real, real loud, we got to end this as loud as you can, 2020 thing, ring in 2024. If God was listening, right, well, he is listening. Let's let him hear what we're going to say on the count of three. One, two, three. Cowboy. Cowboy. See you guys in two weeks.